I'm Shelley Duvall. Welcome to Fairy Tale Theater. Tonight's tale takes us not to a land far, far away, but to America's Catskill Mountains, the setting for Washington Irving's mysterious classic about a peaceful fairy tale hero who liked to sleep, Rip Van Winkle. <laughs> I have a story that may interest you. It takes place in the early Dutch settlement of New York, before this country was even a country. They say it couldn't have happened, but it did. They said it was unbelievable, but believe it, Things like that don't happen to men, they said, but they're wrong. This story is absolutely true. Here it is. made a voyage up the Hudson River must remember the majestic Catskill Mountains, for it is common knowledge that these mountains are filled with mystery and magic. At times they appear to have a life all their own, changing color and shape according to the moods of the heavens. On certain nights, strange sounds and voices echo from the hollows as if the mountains were talking a language all their own. At least that's what folks in the nearby village claimed. Now, Rip Van Winkle was not known as the most industrious man in town. Although he had an extraordinary love for the land, his farm was, to put it mildly, a mess. But he was a good-natured soul, loved by everyone, both young and old. There was only one person who failed to appreciate his easygoing charm. I'm sorry. Did I wake you? It's all right, Wilma. It's about time to get up anyway. It's about time an hour ago. Haven't I told you a million times? Sleeping on the porch is forbidden. That's right, dear, but you see... Uh, You've got a perfectly good bed inside. Right again, Wilma, but you see, <clears throat> last night, just as I was about to get up and mosey on into bed, I noticed that Wolf had fallen asleep right here. So? Well, so, well, you know how he howls when he wakes up alone. I had no choice but to keep him company. Right, Wolf? You know, Rip, that dog's a bad influence on you. Uh, it's probably the other way around, Wilma. Do you mind if I ask you a question? Wilma, please, I just woke up. What are your plans for today? Plans? Uh, well, we really haven't given it much thought. Eh, hey, boy? Well, I have. I've made you a list of things that need to be done around here. And I've done it for your own good. 
as a favor, so it'll be easier for you. You just, uh, as you accomplish each task, you merely cross it off and go on to the next. Oh. I must say, my dear, you have a talent for organization, which I admittedly lack. Thank you. Yes. Yes, dear. This is good. Mm -hmm. Fix the roof, plow the fields, mend the fences. Uh, yeah. You must have worn the pencil down to a nub, Wilma. Time is running out, Rick! <sighs> Unfortunately, that's what time does. Come on, Wolf. Morning, Brown Dutcher. Well, if it isn't Rip Van Winkle. And Wolf. Hello. What are you two old dogs doing over here? Well, actually, we came to get my ladder. You see, we're fixing my roof. You're working on your house? <laughs> yep. yep. Tell me the truth. It was your wife's idea, right? <laughs> I tell you, my friend, if she were my wife, I'd put her in a bright red dress and I'd wave her in front of the nearest bull. <laughs> oh, she's not so bad, Brom. Besides, I don't have a bull. <laughs> Now, about my ladder. Well, the fact is, Rip, I was about to fix my own roof as soon as I'd finished painting this fence. Hmm. A problem easily solved. I'll finish the fence while you work on the roof, then I can have my ladder. Rip, you're a genius. And mind that you don't rip. Rip. <laughs> Good problem. Oh, you're done. I feel so stupid, Rip. I was looking all over for your ladder when it suddenly struck me. I lent it to Will Tussenbrook to fix his barn, huh? Oh. The search for his ladder led Rip to the village inn. Here, Rip often found comfort in the companionship of the citizens of the village who would spend endless, lazy afternoons in the shade, smoking their pipes and having profound discussions over nothing at all. When a human is struck with lightning, it burns him from the inside out and usually with no visible effect. <laughs> Honestly, Von Bommel, with you teaching in our school, it's no wonder the kids are going up so ignorant. Absolutely correct. Yes, and I still maintain it spits him Right down the middle. You've got no And way. I still maintain that it turns hey. into ash. Oh. <laughs> rip, my dear chef. Oh, yes. Let that warm May yourself. Afternoon. Maybe you can settle this, Rip. Yes, uh -huh. yes, Rip. Now you settle this. <laughs> what happens when a man is hit by lightning? I don't know. I've never been hit. <laughs> Where have you been, Rip? It's past noon. Well, I stopped by Brom Dutch's farm on the way to town. I needed to get my ladder. Oh, Brom doesn't have a ladder. He lent it to me. So he mentioned that. Yeah, but I don't have it anymore either. Oh. <laughs> I had Noah bring it over to your place a couple of weeks ago. Oh, he put that... it behind your house. Oh, oh was I, I didn't notice. Uh, but thanks anyway, Will. That was very thoughtful of you. Oh, this is preposterous. Our uh, illustrious King George, our fearless monarch, yes, has decided... God bless oh, God bless him. <laughs> he has decided to levy a new tax. Oh, unbelievable. Well, what difference does it make? I don't make any money. A uh, tax on nothing is still nothing. No, 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 no. You're, you're missing the point. And the point is, we are being taxed to the death, and we have no say in the matter. The next thing you know... <laughs> Dear old Georgie, we'll be putting a tax <laughs> on our breathing. What? <laughs> he can't do that. Breathing. He can do whatever he wants. Yeah. How can he keep track of our breathing? <sighs> One pet. Two pets. Oh. Three pets. Uh. Five pets. Four pets. That's impossible, all right? I can't even keep track of the one who's doing the breathing. Yeah, but you can't count, can you? <laughs> Me, I just stop breathing. Well, come on, Nicholas. Up to you to settle this. You're our host. Now tell us, what do you think? I think we are just a bunch of old fools whistling in the wind. Going <laughs> 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 fast! 
fishing mom. See you later. You're finally home. Yes, there's no place like it, Wilma. And are you enjoying yourself? Yes, very much, thank you, Wilma. I was just watching that beautiful sunset out there behind the mountains, and I couldn't help wondering just what does it all mean? I'll tell you what it means, you lazy good-for-nothing husband. It means another day has ended, and you haven't accomplished one single thing. Not true, Wilma. I found my ladder. You found your ladder? You must be exhausted. Can I fix you a hot bath to soothe those aching muscles? <laughs> Not for me, thanks. But I'll bet old Wolf here could use a hot bath. Eh, boy? Don't get funny with me, Rip Van Winkle, because I'm not laughing! Now, tomorrow, I want you to do just one little thing, all right? Start with the list, remember? Plow the fields, mend the fences, dig a new well, go to town, buy me a sack of flour, and a bolt of cloth. Did you hear me, Rip? Dear, I, I think the entire village heard you. You're impossible. And no sleeping on the porch. You hear that, fool? <sighs> so you can share the experience. But you don't have any hands. And you would look ridiculous if you had a pole in your mouth. Hi, Dad. Mom's looking all over me. Hi, little Rip. It's so mad her head's about to blow off. Why does she get so mad at you? Shen you son. Says it's because you have the farm fall apart, you don't work, you don't make any money, and, and you're never around when she needs you. Well, that might be part of it. So tell me this, little Rip. What do you think about me? I think you're great, Dad. Uh, thank you, son. I think you're great, too. And I'm going to grow up to be just like you. Uh-oh! Goodbye, oh, Dad! Uh. Ah. 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 Look at it. Is it? Thank you, Ben. You definitely made my day. You know this fish, Dad. Of course I know him. Old Ben here is a legend. People have been trying to catch him for as long as I can remember. But he was too smart for him. You did it. You caught him. What kind of bait did you use? No bait. No bait. I just used an empty hook. See, I don't like to trick the fish. That's why this is such an honor. Old Ben decided it was time to get caught, and he chose my hook. <laughs> Thank you, Ben. Well, son, let's take old Ben home to your mother for supper. She loves fish. Ah, my leg's asleep. Come on, Wolf. What's this? The fish, oh, it's Mom. Oh, is that what they look like? This is old Ben. I don't care if his name is Sir Walter Raleigh. He's a fish, and I hate fish. You do? 
I thought you'd be happy, dear. You want to make me happy? Just do what's on the list. And I'm positive that Catch Ben is not on your list. Run, Dad, run. insult if we didn't need him. Of course. I just don't think she understood. She grabbed that fish out of the pail and started smacking me over the head oh, with it. Good lord. I, 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 I just can't believe she'd do such a thing. Mm. I can't believe you caught old Ben. I can't believe she doesn't like fish. Listen to this. It appears that a young man by the name of Franklin was flying a kite in the rain when he discovered that something he calls electricity. No, what? I mean, absolute plot. <laughs> it's quite impossible. <laughs> I mean, you, you, you cannot fly a kite in the rain, can you? <laughs> you see, uh, the paper, you get all sort of wet and soggy, you see, and fall off. I bet you I can fly a kite in the rain. No, 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 you're missing the point. The point is, the man discovered electricity. Mm. Well, in my opinion, you can't discover something that is already there. Yes, quite so. And in my opinion... You can't fly a kite in the rain. <laughs> you are missing the point. According to you, Derek, we're always missing the point. Yes, you, you, you always are. <laughs> Rip Van Winkle. Top of the day, Wilma. Why on earth would you want to waste your time with these, these louts? Well, gentlemen, I guess I'll be on my way. You lazy, good-for-nothing uh, pig of a man who calls himself a husband. You ought to be ashamed of yourself. Oh, all right, so Wilma, you've you made your point. Did you hear me? Uh, Maybe Wilma's right. Maybe I am worthless. I'm serious. That's why I've decided to turn over a new leaf. From now on, I'm going to work hard. From sun up to sundown, nothing but work, work, work. I'm going to fix up this farm. I'm going to mend the fences. I'm going to plow the fields. And I'm going to plant acres and acres of crops. And have the most productive farm in this area. And when I walk into town, they're going to point at me and say, There goes Rip Van Winkle, the most industrious man in the village. Ooh, you're right. That's not me. I'm just a simple man with simple needs. And right now, I need to go up to those mountains. Come on. So, as they often did, Rip and Wolf escaped the farm and the noise of his wife by going off to hunt.
believe that's the great Hudson River. We've come a long way from home. What? Must be somebody from the village who needs help. You called? Nay. But I, I heard. Heavy Victor King, can you see him breaking my back? And hurry, there we. Rip obligingly shouldered the keg and followed the odd stranger up a rugged path. Careful with that keg. They came to a hollow surrounded by jagged mountain walls. Here, new objects of wonder presented themselves. I used to be a pretty good player myself until my wife caught me. Who is he? Uh, Rip Van, Rip Van Winkle, sir. I see. I assume you know who we are. No, no, sir, I, I'm sorry I don't. Can I put this down? I am Commander Heinrich Hudson. And these are my men, the crew of the half moon. Please, please to make your acquaintance. Uh, can I put this down now, sir? Please? We have decided to let you stay with us temporarily. Well, th that's not really necessary. Yet. But only if you promise not to interrupt our game of nine pins and if you promise to keep our flagons full of drink. Well, I... There's no need to thank us. Just start filling those buckets. Rip did as he was told. The men downed the drink and then returned to their game of nine pins. As the night wore on, Rip grew bold and ventured to taste the beverage himself. Uh, oh. Naturally a thirsty soul, he was tempted to have another and another, and he soon came to feel warm and welcome among the men and their melancholy part. Then they go. You think your wife would approve? <laughs> You're not so bad, Van <laughs> why, why do you play this game? Because we always have and we always win. Oh. Why does it sound like thunder? Why not? Maybe we lack thunder. My crew and I discovered this land over a hundred and fifty years ago. Beautiful, isn't it? is so sacred to me. That's why I return here every 20 years to look over the land, to see if future generations are taking care of it. And are we? So far. 
Well, I'll do my best to help out. I appreciate it. <laughs> what exactly is this we're thinking? Why? I've never tasted anything quite like this before. And you never will again. <laughs> sure makes a fellow feel strange. Oh, what's strange about that?
Don't tell me I slept here all night. Oh! so they could take my dog and my gun. Uh-huh. So, well, we'll see about this. I know where they are. find no trace of who and what he remembered of the previous night. I'm a nice person, but I don't like to be taken advantage of. I'm going to march right up to that commander and tell him that give me my dog and gun back or I'm... he's going to be in big trouble. No. Shouldering his rusted gun, he sadly started the long trek homeward. The mountains that had once greeted him as a friend had now become a strange and foreign place. your duty as a responsible citizen to vote. Ah, here, here. Think of all those brave heroes at Bunker Hill and at Valley Forge. Yes. Did they die for nothing? No. Oh, of course not. No. And so that's why I encourage each and every one of you to vote. Here, here, yes. here, 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 here. When you vote, you... Uh, yes, a question in the rear there. Uh, what about women? I like them, so we... No, I, no, I mean, why aren't we allowed to vote? Uh, the women allowed to vote. But, well, you, you aren't allowed to vote because it, uh, when our founding fathers were making up the Constitution, they were, they were very busy. It's, it's, so uh, they forgot. That's it. They forgot. But you'll be voting very soon. Yes. What about Sam here? Sam? Well, Sam can't vote. I mean, he, well, he can't vote now. But he will vote in time. Possibly not our time. But for those of you who can vote, I encourage you to go down to the inn where we set up the polling booth and vote! Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, and please vote for me as your mayor. I can do great things for this community. Just trust me. What are you talking about? What do you mean? I don't understand one word of this gibberish. Gibberish? From your appearance, sir, I'd say you were an outside troublemaker. No, 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 whoa, 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 no. Here, no, I, I, this I, man is a potential vote. I'm running for mayor. We must be patient in a situation like that. Sir, are you going to vote? Vote? Vote. Uh, yes, yes, now that you mention it, I, I vote. Oh, well, then the problem is solved. Are you federal or Democrat? Well, actually, I'm Dutch, if it's all the same to you. 
Oh, he's crazy. A lunatic. Yes, no, uh, no. why do you have that gun on your shoulder there? Anyway, are you some sort of troublemaker? No, 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 please. I, I want no trouble. I'm simply a poor, quiet man, a, a native of this fine village and a loyal subject to the king. God bless him. A Tory! A spy! No, no, no. Yes, I will get that man out of here. Well, obviously a dangerous man. I, well, we should all know that we should never trust a man with moss growing on him. Uh, well, uh, yes. boys, play something here. Well, now, now we've lost the crowd here. Oh, what a day. I should have hired a juggler kid. Wilma? Wilma? Rip returned home only to find a deserted and broken down shack. Overnight, he had lost everything he had known and loved. Our newfound freedom, we have passed our very first proposition. Ah. Yes, right here. And it reads Cows shall be prohibited from roaming the town streets. Oh. We spent a lot of time on that, that was passed unanimously. We also have another one here Citizens shall refrain from spitting and blowing their nose in public. That's particularly disgusting, and we'll vote on that next week. Very busy this week. And I want to thank all of you for voting me your new mayor. Ah. Here, here. <laughs> As you know, I was your unofficial mayor before we voted, but now I'm your official mayor. That's what freedom is all about, of course. Yes. Yes. And as your mayor, I would like to share some of the visions that I have for this community. I see periods of great growth, and if you will, prosperity. And to ensure that, what we're going to do is Cut down all those trees. Yes, sir. We're going to put in new roads, new houses, new inns, new shops. Yes, but you also have to respect the land. Uh, it's him again, the spy. Uh, uh, you there, sir, old man. So you're back, are you? Well, what are you doing here? What am I doing here? Sir, I should like to ask you what you are doing here. What? And what are they doing here? And what is that doing here? For that? As for me, I'm simply looking for my friends and my neighbors. Oh, you have friends and neighbors here, do you? Oh, yes. really? Aha. Uh -huh. I have many friends. Is that right? Well, name them. Well, where's Nicholas Vedder? Nicholas Vedder. <laughs> Nicholas Vedder. Vedder, Vedder, Vedder. Oh, yes, yes. Well, we're going to have a conversation with him. I'm afraid it'll be a little one-sided. He's been dead for 18 years. Is that great, gentlemen? Dead. Yes, 18 years. Well, so are, are you talking about the Nicholas Vedder that, that always smoked the pipe? It always smoked the pipe, yes, yes, the very same. As a matter of fact, he fell asleep in his bed smoking his pipe. Burned the whole inn down. Oh. Uh, oh, oh, oh. Then there's Will Tussenbrook. Tussenbrook, yes, not a very bright man, as I recall. No, he, he joined the army during the war. Yes, he's, he's buried at Valley Forge, as I recall. He sat on his own bayonet. Terrible thing. War? What war? What war? War? What? What you war? That? <laughs> Why, this man is as stupid as he looks. War. <laughs> what about the, uh, Derek Van Bummel, the, the school teacher? Derek, Derek, Derek. Well, well, he was in the army, too, as I recall. Well, yes, of course. He became a great general. General? But he was just a teacher. 
Yes, well, he's in Congress now, yes. This community, my dear man, is very proud of Derek uh, von, uh, what was? Uh, Brummel. 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 Here, we have, we have a statue of him somewhere here. Does, does anybody remember Rip Van Winkle? Rip, Rip Van Winkle. Rip Van Winkle. Rip Van Winkle. Well, that's a good one, isn't it? Uh, Why, sure, we all know Rip Van Winkle. That's him there, on the porch. That, that, that's Rip Van Winkle? Sir, they tell me you're Rip Van Winkle. Huh? What? They say you're Rip Van Winkle. Yes, that's right. Well, are you sure? Well, sure, I'm sure. I, I don't profess to know everything, but I know my own name. Uh, what's your name? Who knows? I, 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 I'm not myself. I, I, I thought I was, but when I saw you, you looked like who... I, I thought I was, and uh, uh, of now I don't know who I am or where I am or, 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 or anything. I, I only know that I, I fell asleep last night, and, and when I, I woke up, I, everything is, uh, is changed. Better take that gun away from him. Good idea. What, what was your father's name? Rip Van Winkle, same as me. He went off into the mountains about 20 years ago when I was a little boy. He's, uh, he didn't come back. Your mother? My mother? She died a couple of years ago. Broke a blood vessel, uh, screaming at this traveling salesman. Oh, sounds like Wilma. Did you know her? No. I was. I was her husband. Your, your, your father. You, you crazy. Does anybody here remember old Rip Van Winkle? Oh, Rip Van Winkle, yes, yes, I do. I remember old Rip Van Winkle, yes, he disappeared many years ago, yes. Hasn't been seen since, I think he was eight. Nice, nice chap, yes, yes, missed him. I want to... It is, it's, it's old Rip Van Winkle himself. Dead? Dead. Little Rip. You don't know how glad I am to see you. My own son, my own little boy. Welcome home, Rip It's me, your old friend, Peter. Peter Vanderdonk. Oh, that's me, yes, Peter Vanderdonk. <laughs> my old friend. <laughs> you look great, Peter, yeah, yeah. but old, yeah. very old. No, 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 no. I, I, I'm not old. Anyway, you're no spring chicken yourself, are you? <laughs> oh, Rip, it is good to see you again. <laughs> Tell me, where have you been hey, for 20 long years? Sleeping. As far as I can tell, sleeping? Yes. For 20 years? Yes, well, in that case, he must, he must have been very tired. <laughs> <laughs> but, but it seemed like only only one night. I, I swear it. Uh, uh, I, you see, I went hunting off into the woods with, with my dog, Wolf, and uh, I, I, uh, I, I ran into this little man. He was, he was carrying this huge keg, heavy keg on his like this, and he was very strange, very strange. He took me up into uh, uh, the hills, and this uh, uh, man who called himself And so Rip proceeded to tell the townspeople all that had happened to him. In time, Rip Van Winkle became somewhat of a legend in the village, and because of what he had learned in the mountains, 
he became the unofficial guardian of the land. And he never grew tired of telling the story to anyone who would listen, especially the children. I said, hello, I'm Todd. You want me to help you? He said, get this king back. Then I met this commander, Henry Hudson. They're these weird, really weird looking men. And I slept for 20 years and came down the hill and finally found out who I was. Is it really a true story, Mr. Van Winkle? As true as truth. Oh, I still don't believe you. How was that? Well, this. I'm not going up there to find out. That's why I return here every 20 years, to make sure that nobody forgets the story of Rip Van Winkle. <laughs> Sailors whose ship had long been sunk.